rural and underserved areas. The organization was started back in 2006 in terms of Act of the Parliament and then the regulations which we grind the fund started back in 2009 and more or less that's the time I also joined the fund to start actually starting the process of providing communication in rural and, uh, and underserved areas. Uh, when I was told to actually come to talk to this group of very interesting people about uh, the development of communication in rural and underserved areas, I was kind of happy to say I'll be able to share with you some few ideas. And uh, because this is supposed to be more or less not a very formal presentation, I have this agenda which will start with rural areas to touch a little bit about application and services and then go beyond mobile and then come back to rural areas. I'm not providing any answers, more or less for the unlucky few I'll be asking you questions, so be ready, be active, because some of the questions will be from what I've been saying, but some will come from something else. Uh, when I, the whole day today I, I had a colleague of mine who works with uh, a certain project on the same issues of Universal Communication Access Fund. I'd like to introduce him, Eric White. Hi everybody. He, Hi. He works with a project called Global Broadband Innovations. You can talk a little bit about that project. Yeah, sure, really quickly. I don't want to take away from, from Peter's time, but uh, this Global Broadband Innovations Project is a, is a USAID project that's designed to support uh, the build out of communications infrastructure in rural areas beyond uh, where the carriers have provided it so far. Uh, so we're working with Peter to um, you know, help UCAF to do that. Uh, but we also are interested in promoting the development of and applications and services that are appropriate for development in a rural context. So, um, if any of you have ideas, I'm interested in talking to you about it afterwards. So, that's all. Thank you, Eric. That was a good break. Now, we'll start with the rural areas. <laughs> if you look at rural areas in a normal way, it's a case of 3.0 value. Low population density, low income, low interest level. Those are the three things. <coughs> I, I, was, I was working with on this map <laughs> late today. I said it's important just to show you what's happening in Tanzania in terms of population density. Which, whatever is in yellow, is a population distribution of 0 to 20 people per square kilometer. Whatever you find in this gray tower is a population distribution of 20 to 50 people per square kilometer, and then what follows is 50 to 100, and then these dark ones, very few, very dark, are the ones which at least have a population distribution of over 600 people per square kilometer, which would actually, it's only in the and few areas across here where they have at least 600 people per square kilometer. But in most, or the vast of the country, the, the vast of the country has a population density of less than 20 people per square kilometer. If you take a country just in the neighborhood like Rwanda here, everything will be like this color. If you take countries like Japan, everything will be this color. If you take countries like China, everything will be like this color, etc. So it shows there is something which is happening in the country, but why am I talking about it? It affects how people put up infrastructure in rural areas. The triple jeopardy I was talking about here. Now I was talking about this. Now, in terms of income and literacy levels, the biggest form of income is income poverty. They don't earn money. They, have, they can till the land, have food, but they won't have money because they are more or less subsistence farmers, even pastoralists are limited in what they can do, etc. They have this level of literacy which would allow them to interact with the environment they are in, but not much beyond. So why am I talking about this? You as programmers, when you're thinking of application and services to support rural communities, if they're too complicated, you won't be able to attract their interest. If it's something which can, they can associate with the environment and the socio-economic 
leakages within the society, this will actually interest them. And finally, they have capacity to consume less complex ICT services. I'm talking about voice services, voice telephony, radio, TV, things which are much, much simpler. The moment you go to a stage of very complex, like internet, etc., the, the, the capacity to consume those services is, is very, very limited in rural and underserved areas of Tanzania. There's this very important way of looking at the universal service, and this is kind of how we look at it from, 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 from our perspective as the government fund, which has participation of, 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 also, of also private sector. There are demand side, demand side issues and uh, demand side issues and supply side issues. When we're looking at provisioning of communication services in rural areas, the first thing or the fundamental thing which we all wish to have is infrastructure. You cannot have an application running in an area without infrastructure. So that will actually constitute the su supply side issue. And as you might have noticed within the country, the development of infrastructure, starting with the low cost areas which are urban centers with high population, with grid power, with everything, nice roads, going over to high cost areas. These are the areas with low population density, very hard to reach areas without access road, without power, etc. On this side, also the, the services started with high income households, looking at only in 1996, you'll you actually be charged $1 per day just to have a phone. With that means the articles at that time, the average revenue per user were in excess of $100 per month. Nobody knows where that went, because now the average revenue per user is, is around $4, $5. That's what people actually can give out to whatever services we are giving them. Now, as we're moving towards low-income households, there's a threshold where these people cannot afford anything. This is that. But as far as the fund is concerned, in the, the, the current scenario, we are looking at the supply side issues. When we are putting up infrastructure, we are trying to address the supply side issues. Ideally, even if you have 100% coverage in every corner of the country, there will still be some people who will not be able to afford the services. Ideally, in every country where, even if you have 100%, there will still be a group which will not have uh, they will not have income to actually support services, the services. The, the, the intention of the fund is to cover the so-called access gap. The market efficiency gap usually is covered by competitive forces. When the Tigos, the Airtels are competing for customers, they will be very efficient in whatever they do and do market the market forces will push that the current level of access will be reaching this portion. Essentially, I, I have a very, I would say, a guesstimate. We are almost approaching a point where we are covering this market efficiency gap. That, that, that areas we are not covered, they are not covered not because of any other reason, it's because they are not profitable. So they actually need intervention of an of, 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 of organization like our fund. The, the, Now, I'll share with you some, 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 some few maps. Now, what you see is the first map of the population distribution. And then you see these maps are put in here of the areas which are, have at least 50% or less coverage. You can see it's almost the areas which did not have enough population. You remember this, the first map I had here. This one. Look at the areas with population less than 20%, uh, less than 20 people per square kilometer, and then look at this map. So from this you can actually, actually see that population density has been one of the biggest drivers of coverage, except in areas where I would say these are exceptional. This is, as you can see, this population distribution here is of the Dar es Morogoro Road all the way to somewhere like Yale, Roma, etc. So there are some pools because of other economic activities that are happening on this. This is also a, a, one of the major roads, this is another road, etc. You can actually see. But the rest of the areas ha have at least 50% or less in terms of coverage. 
I also like to share another map. This has even smaller, smaller dots in the middle. These are the areas which also have coverage one way or the other, but the signal quality is not very good. So there are some complaints on, in terms of coverage in these areas. The coverage is that this is, this is almost, this is in Tuara, but there's still some places in Tuara with, with, with limited coverage. This is Mafia Island, and there are areas here with, with limited coverage. This is just beyond the rest of just before you reach Mandis, there are areas where they're complaining that they have, they have, they have, they have limited, and limited coverage. So, from the government point of view, I, 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 I put, I removed that colored and see these are the areas combined with, with problems of at least 50% or less coverage and areas also with, with very low signal coverage, etc. like that. So, what are we planning to do? We want to improve coverage. We're currently hanging around 70% geographical coverage. We wish to move it to about 90% geographical coverage. We currently have 85% population coverage. We want, we want to move it to 95% population coverage. For obvious reasons, when you're moving in this part, you see the geographical coverage will, 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 will move by 20 percentile but the population coverage will only move by 10% because of the very low population density of the areas we're talking about now. And it might not be very possible in any near future with the current technology to have 100% of the, of, the, of, the, of the geographical coverage. It, we could reach, say, 99% of the population coverage, but 100% of the geographical coverage will 